So yesterday I posted a video of this vulture character from my upcoming short film Deep Rooted. Um, I was showing off a wing rig built in Blender using geometry nodes and a simple armature to get feathers to distribute nicely across the surface of the wing. Uh, one or two people expressed an interest in finding out more about how the setup was made. So I've put together a video which has ended up being quite long to hopefully explain some of the processes involved. Just to mention before we get started, I am by no means a Blender expert. I've been rigging for years in Maya, but I've only been in Blender for a couple of months really, so I'm sure there are better ways of doing lots of the things that I'm going to show. If you know a better way, feel free to leave a comment and um, hopefully I'll learn something too. Also, I'm not going to go through every single node that I'm using in detail. Um, there's loads of great videos out there if you want to learn what each of the nodes does. I'd recommend channels like Erin Dale and Johnny Matthews who have absolutely amazing resources for learning geometry nodes if you're just getting started with it. So with that said, let's get going. So this is the file we're going to start with. Um, you can grab this from the description. Um, we've basically got a really simple armature set up where if we're going to think of the wing as basically a limb with some bits hanging off the trailer edge of it, then we've got three main bones that represent the upper arm forearm and like a hand and then these little fk chains hang off the edge of it and they are constrained so that they orient themselves halfway between the two bones where they join in like that and what we also need is a piece of geometry from which we're going to derive all the curvature for the wing and we're going to use the uvs of this plane to lay out all of our feathers and drive their deformation so the important things about this piece of geometry are we need a vertex at each bone junction so wherever there's an articulation point on the armature we need a vertex there which is a hundred percent weighted to the bone at that point we also need this extra little buffer zone where the mesh overhangs the joints at the end just so that when we finally smooth this mesh and it starts to shrink back towards these joints, let's actually do it now and I can show you what I mean. Um, if we add a subdivision surface modifier here with plenty of geometry, give it three to start with. And we also don't want the corners smoothing like this. So in advanced, we need to turn on keep corners like that. So when we start to bend these joints the mesh shrinks back towards this point of articulation so we need that little buffer zone at the end just so that we've still got room to lay out our feathers along the surface let's have a quick look at the uvs for this because they're going to be very important what we need is for them to be laid out uniformly in the grid from zero to one so that they fill the entire space because working within a zero to one tile like this makes it very easy to parameterize lots of properties and it's just going to mean we have to do a lot less range mapping and conversion between different scales and, and units is we want to use geometry nodes to distribute some curves on this surface um, which we'll we'll later use to deform and drive the actual geometry of the feathers so we need a geometry object to add the geometry nodes modifier to it doesn't matter what you use i'm just going to stick a plane in for now just rename this and then if we go into the geometry nodes workspace, add a new geometry nodes tree, give it a name to keep things organized. We don't actually need the plane so we can get rid of this connection. What we'd like to do is to work within the same zero to one space like the UVs are laid out on this surface. And the plan is going to be to create a curve that runs from zero to one along the top with as many points as we want feathers. And then at each of those points, we will instance another curve that runs down in this direction. So we'll end up with like a little comb of curves in that zero to one tile. And then what we can do is transform those out of UV space into the space of this deformed geometry. And these curves should hopefully come along for the ride. So the first job is to lay out this mesh in a representation of its uvs and then we can start to do some sampling of properties and transfer those onto the curves as we need them so if we want access to that geometry we need to bring it into our geometry nodes workspace which we do by simply just dragging it in like this so to lay it out along its uvs we need to split the edges first and we want to set the position of those points 
and the position we want is a named attribute called UV map, I believe. Pipe this in. Why is that not working? Oh, it's because UV map is with a capital M. There we go. So now we see the grid and it's it's dense because of the um, the subdivision modifier. Turn that off. There we go. We're back to the simple plane geometry laid out along its UVs. So one important step is that before we set those positions, we need to store the original positions of the incoming geometry so that we can push this back to its deformed state later on. So we want to grab a store named attribute. We'll call it something like a ridge position. It's a vector attribute and the value is position. I'm just going to throw that into a frame. Okay, so let's make that curve that's going to run along the top that we're going to hang all our subsequent feather curves from. Chuck down a curve line. We want it to run from 0, 1 to 1, 1 on X and Y. So 0, 1 to 1, 1. Now you can see that. And we want to resample that curve to have as many points as we want feathers. Let's make the curve that we're going to use to actually instance. I'm going to use a quadratic Bezier for that. 16 is probably a little bit high. Um, we want this curve to run in this direction. So start point is going to be world origin 0, 0, 0. Middle, we're going to go 0.5 on Y. And the end point is going to be 1 on Y. Have we'll a quick look at that. Oh, my bad. I need to go negative 0.5 and negative 1. There we go. So now if we put an instance on points in here, use this curve as the instance, we get one of these quadratic Bezier's instance on each point of our curve line. So how do we push these curves back into the space of this deformed mesh? Well, first of all, to manipulate the points on these curves, which are currently instances, we need to realize them. That gives us access to them as an individual group of points again. And then we'll do a set position and this position value. This is the, the tricksy bit, if you like. How are we going to know how to transfer from UV space back to object space? Well, the way we can do it is we can sample this original position property that we stored at the closest UV location to each point on these curves. So the way we can do that using a sample nearest surface, we're after vector information. This is the mesh we're interested in. The value that we want is that named attribute that we stored earlier called original position, or pos, and that should be all we need. When this gets evaluated on the point domain of these realized instances, it will look at each point and say, what is the closest UV value, because we're in this zero to one space, and it will sample from this attribute and transfer that across, in theory. Let's see if it works. Bingo. So now when we manipulate the armature, we should have curves that follow along with our mesh nicely. Seems to work. Okay, time to create some feathers. So also in this start file, there's a hidden collection here and inside there is a feather model. Just have a quick look at that. As you can see, it's again running from zero to one along the Y axis. And this is again very important because we're gonna use this zero to one parameter to derive lots of properties about this mesh, which if it didn't sit nicely within this zero to one space, it would mean we'd have to do a lot of pushing and pulling and massaging the numbers to, to get what we want. So this, this is gonna keep things nice and easy for us. There is a, also a little bit of rotation, a tilt, along the length of the feather. That's just so that they can lie on top of each other nicely without just all sitting on a coincident plane in, on the Z axis. So pretty simple model. It doesn't actually matter which, you can design this any way you want. I think the important part is just to keep it zero to one. Okay, so let's go back to geometry nodes. I'm gonna hide the surface for now because we've got these curves that gives us an idea of where things are. And I'm gonna drag the feather geometry into the geometry nodes tree here. 
Now the first thing we want to do is store some information about this original state of this mesh because what we're going to end up doing is shrinking all the vertices to zero on X and Z. So we end up with just a line of verts along this Y axis. We'll then transform that into the space of each of these curves. And then once we have that, we'll re-inflate the mesh to its original shape, but in the space of the deformed wing surface. And that's what's going to allow us to keep things very nicely overlapping without crashing through one another. Okay, so first of all, let's take this geometry and store some attributes. The first thing we need is some vector information and we want the position. I'm going to call this feather pause. And then once we've got that position stored, we can shrink the position down like I described onto a two dimensional line rather than this mesh we see here. And all we're going to do is multiply the position by zero in all axes apart from Y if we have a quick look at that let's just hide the actual instance as you can see this is now all sitting along this one line so i'm going to move all these guys above and we want to do an instance on points node to do our duplication of, of that geometry and the, we can reuse these original the same points we used to instance these curves we can use that again for the feathers this needs to actually go into instances not points so now if we join our feathers with our curves that we made before so we can see those both together with curves following the wing surface and we've got feathers collapsed down being instanced along our original curve and if we change the resolution no sorry the um the resampling count we can control the amount of feathers that we that we get along our wing okay now we need to push these, the geometry of these feathers, into the space of each of these curves. And to do that, we're going to need to know which curve index each of these corresponds to. And because we need to realize these instances in order to have access to their points, we need to store their index number before we realize them, while we've still got access to that information. So let's grab these instances and do a store named attribute. It's going to be an integer. The value will be the index of each instance. And we're going to call this feather index like that. So once we have that, we can then realize these instances, giving us access to the individual points. And now we can set position of those points. And the position data we're going to get by sampling these curves that are coming out of here. So if we sample curve, let's have a look at what information we can get here. The value we want is going to be position. We want the position of some point on this curves object. It's going to be a vector. The curve index is this attribute we've just stored here. So if we drop down in named attribute feather index, that's going to give us the curve index. So which of these curves do we want to sample from? And we don't want to sample by factor. We want to sample by length. And the reason for that is because as this wing deforms, these curves are going to probably change length. So if we use factor, our feathers are going to be stretching and compressing as the wing deforms, which we don't want. We want them to stay their original length, and their original shape without deforming. So we're going to sample by length instead and this is where keeping the f the original feather model this one in that zero to one space is going to pay off because we can use the y position of its vertices as this length input directly to the curve i'll show you what i mean if we recall that named attribute that we stored right at the start feather pos it's a vector so we need to we're only interested in the y because that's the length we want to travel along the curve so we need to separate that vector information into its constituent floats and we can use the y 
for this length. So it's going to say however far along the y-axis my vertices are, I'm going to travel that distance along these curves. So it shouldn't matter whether these curves stretch or compress or anything. We're just going to go a certain distance along them and stop. And that's where we're going to place the vertices of these instances. Let's see if it works. No, why not? Okay, I figured out the problem. When we store this index, we don't want to store the index of each point. We only want to store the index per instance so that it corresponds with the instances here of these curves. So we need to change the domain of this attribute from point to instance, and then it should all line up. So now in theory, we shouldn't need to visualize these curves anymore. We should still have geometry following along with the wing shape. Okay, I'm just gonna tidy this up a little bit. Okay, so the last step for this part of the tutorial is we need to reconstitute these feathers back into their original shape, sort of uncollapse them down from these, these 2D lines um, back to their original geometry. And we're going to need a couple of vectors to start with in order to do that. The first one's pretty simple. If we unhide the wing surface again for a second, now meshes have a property called normal, which comes out like this, perpendicular to the faces of the surface. And that's gonna be really helpful in restoring the Z information to our feather vertices. So let's start with that. That's gonna be the easier one to do. So we're gonna to need to sample nearest surface. The mesh is gonna be this guy again, the surface. Use that geometry. Uh, we want vector information. The value that we're interested in is gonna be the normal this time and the position at which we want to sample is going to be this position that we just set our points to. Plug that in there. So we now have the normal of the wing surface at each point of our mesh. So if we take our original position attribute that we stored, it's a named attribute, it's a vector, it's called feather we take that and multiply it well actually we don't we just want the z component so we need to separate this out separate x y z we just want to multiply the z component of this original position by the surface normal which we get from here so vector math multiply those guys together in fact we don't need to multiply we want to scale the normal by by this z amount so this is now going to give us the offset that we need to push the points along in the wing space in order to reconstitute the Z component of our original position. It's a bit of a mouthful, but I hope that makes sense. So if we put down a new set position node, and this time we don't want to set an absolute position. We want to set an offset from the current position. So we're using this offset here. And if we put this vector in, you see, now we're getting back one element of our original position. We've got the Y already. We've now got the Z back. So we just need the X. And the X is a little bit trickier because we don't have direct access to a vector that's what would be perpendicular to the, um, the curves. We sort of do. The curve does have a normal property, but it's kind of unreliable. You can't always rely on it not to flip. So we're going to construct a more stable vector to use for our x displacement and the way we can do that is we will reuse we will reuse this normal attribute and we're going to do a cross product operation using the normal and the tangent property of this of the curves and the tangent of a curve is the vector that runs in the direction the curve is pointing at any given sample point so if you have a curve like this the tangent at the start will be in this direction Take the tangent here. It's the vector that kind of, if a roller coaster came off the tracks at that point, that's the direction it would, it would travel in like that. 
So fortunately we already have access to that information from our sample curve that we did back here where we, we took the Y position of our original feather and we got the position along the curve that corresponded. Conveniently this no node will also output the tangent information at that point for us as well. So we can directly take that and we want to do a cross product operation which is part of the vector math node. And what a cross product does is if you feed it two vectors, it will output a third vector which is perpendicular to both of the original vectors. So if you imagine we take our surface normal vector coming out along the y-axis here, we take our curves tangent vector coming down like this, the cross product will hopefully output us a third vector here which is at 90 degrees to both so here's the here's the normal that goes into the second cross product input and now we want to we can duplicate this scale node we want to scale this vector according to the x component of our original feather position so if we now see what effect that one has something weird going on but it's looking promising. We're definitely getting closer. So what we actually want to do is add together these two vectors before we offset them. Just do a vector math add on these guys. And that should give us back our Z as well. It's looking good. And the reason this is looking weird and a bit funky is because these curves are not actually long enough. Our original feather ran from zero to one and these curves are not actually one unit long. So as we sample along, we get to the end of the curve before we get to the end of the mesh. But that's a pretty simple fix. All we need to do is add a multiplier here where we sample the original vector. Connect this up, change it to multiply. And we now have a value here. You can already see it's working because it's set to 0 0.5 by default. But we can control the length of the feathers. And you can see as they reach the end of those curves, they just all bunch up at the end. We want them to roughly correspond with the end of those bone chains. So I'm going to leave it around about there, 0 0.35. 0 0.35. And then we just need to make sure to scale this offset vector for the X and Z components by the same amount because obviously these are chubby little feathers at the moment which don't really represent our original source so if we scale this vector by the same amount 0.35 pop that in instead we get our original feather shapes back it's all looking good and there's obviously it's a bit gappy here so we probably want to add more feathers which is as simple as changing this resample amount on our on our curve so we can fill in those gaps a bit more like that and there we have some feathers which follow the surface of the deforming wing completely procedural we can control the amount of feathers that we have the scale of those feathers and because we have everything laid out initially within that zero to one tile that we mentioned at the beginning, it becomes very easy to drive changes in, in the properties of the feathers along the length of the wing. We've sort of parameterized the wing space, if you like. So it's very easy, instead of just putting 0 0.35 for the feather scale uniformly, we could also multiply that by the X position of the original curve so we get small feathers at the start large feathers at the end or we could even have it blend between one feather shape at the start into a different shape at the end anything where you would associate blending with a zero to one slider or or something like that you can apply any of those kind of changes across the space of the wing so it becomes really really flexible and we probably just want to chuck a, uh, a subdivision surface on top of here just to smooth things out a little bit more and yeah that's the the basic method that i use to to build the wing for the vulture character i will probably do a follow-up tutorial which explains how to do the the wing cover it's like a piece of geometry that wraps around over the top of these feathers but still follows very closely to the surface that was also a geometry node solution but i don't want this tutorial to get any longer than it already is so i'll probably handle that in a separate video
And if you like the look of the film and you're interested in finding out more, there's a production gallery on our website, links in the description. Thanks for watching, see you soon.